Uh, I'm keen to know if you know anybody who has parlayed their hobby into a career. If they've, if they're really into something as a as a pastime, and then have decided to make that their nine to five, as people say. The reason I ask, I read an article uh, last night about a former teacher who has now gone pro gaming. He games. Now, if you thought that was something only your 17-year-old did, at high volume, at all hours of the day, on school holidays, when he's promised to be doing his homework, no. Seems uh, everyone in the classroom is now hooked on gaming. It is a thing. And uh, if you know anything about that world, you know that there's YouTube videos who, uh, or YouTubers who, who earn good living from uh, just gaming. And uh, then there's a whole tournament circuit that you can get on as a gamer. That's what this particular teacher has done. I want to know if you or anybody you know has gone from uh, something that is just a hobby or a pastime to then making that their bread and butter. One double three six nine three. Somebody who knows something about this switch, Sue Elson. She's a career expert. She joins me now. Hi, Sue. Hi, Tony. So um, it happens to people, they might have a crisis in middle age. They might have a wake up moment. And they go, I'm not enjoying my career. There is something that I've dabbled in uh, my whole life, and I want to give that a go instead. Is it a course of action you recommend? Well, it really depends on what that hobby or interest is. And a lot of people, their hobby involves spending money, not earning money. So you'd have to ask yourself the question, is there somebody who's willing to pay for the outcome of whatever my hobby is? Okay. Isn't that funny you say that? Every time I bring home an aviation-related trinket... I say to my wife, it's okay, it's superannuation. And she, she, doesn't, she doesn't believe me. Um, but yeah. for somebody in this uh, who might be contemplating it, um, and, and in your uh, experience as a career expert, does it pay off generally or are there great risks involved? I would say, generally speaking, there are great risks involved, particularly if you quit your day job in protest and then assume that your hobby is going to make money the day after. Yeah. Most of these things have a very long burn. So a typical example would be maybe say you collect motorbikes and yep. you fix them up and you say, right, I can make a hobby out of this. So what if you can never sell them? What if you can never part with a product that you've created? You know, It's going to be difficult to make money out of that. Now, there's another issue that this whole topic brings up, and that's is if your career becomes obsolete. So there was this really amazing guy I met once who was a sign writer. Now, nobody wants to pay for a hand-painted sign anymore, but there are plenty of cashed-up baby boomers who were more than happy to pay for him to sign-write their motorbikes, caravans, bikes, Uh. trucks, whatever... And so although his career wasn't suited in one area, he could sort of find another audience who would pay for it. And he's doing what he loves, sign writing, and getting paid handsomely and nobody quibs about the price. You make a great point about, um, about, I guess, uh, how lucrative the the hobby might be. And if you are into Mm. collecting bottles, say, and I'm not knocking that, but the, Mm. the example I used of somebody going to gaming, gaming is a massive global industry. So you Mm. are, you, uh, aren't you? So you're diminishing your risk of falling on your face if you throw your lot in with such a huge global pastime. Yes and no, because obviously if it's a huge global pastime with an international audience, there's going to be a lot more competition. Now, this gamer, he's earning money out of YouTube videos that is helping other people with it. A bit like, I think he was an Australian of the Year nominee, the, the maths teacher yeah, who, who yeah. created WooTube. You know, he, he made money out of it. But let's let's look at the facts. You have to have a minimum of 1,000 subscribers. You have to have 4,000 Uh, watch hours, you know, there's all these hurdles you have to overcome. To get to that stage, you would be needing to win competitions, getting lots of subscribers, uh, streaming your games live on multiple platforms. You might have memberships, you might have subscriptions, you might have a Patreon. There's, There's all these little affiliate programs that you might have to set up as well. And again, most of those are very easy to join, but to actually generate regular revenue out of, 
you'd be better off with your twenty dollars an hour in a coffee shop and just doing it for fun when you like, kind of thing. You They're know, also it's also very time intensive and labour intensive uh, to set up uh, to go from the the hobby to the career. Sue, uh, you are uh, remarkable, and uh, I really appreciate your time this afternoon. Um, full Thanks, bottle honey. on that, and I, I'm grateful. So thank you for your time. You're welcome, Sue Elson, career expert.